Hey guys, so in today's video, we're going to be making a 3D printed cover for this uh, outlet arrangement that I have here. And uh, guys, I'm not a licensed uh, electrician. What I needed was a double outlet with 220 on one side and 110 on the other side because I have a drill press that I uh, run along with a table saw that runs on 220. So we're going to have to uh, design one in on shape and 3D print it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with uh, by taking a picture of it and then we can use the picture to design the part around. I'll show you guys how to do that in on shape. It's pretty cool actually. Guys, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Turn on your notification bell and leave some comments. I love reading the comments and do my best to get back to you guys as soon as I see them. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just get back here. Uh, you don't want to be too close because as you get close, it kind of skews the the thing, so I like to be maybe about a foot away from the uh, from the object, and then you want to try to you don't want to take it you know at an angle like this, and you don't want to take it like this. You kind of want want to be somewhere in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and just shoot a picture here. Open up on shape, and once you're in here, we're going to create a document. So this is, uh, actually I'm going to create it in my YouTube projects. Alright, so create a document. And we're going to call this custom wall plate. Alright, now what we want to do next is we want to import our uh, picture. But before we do that, let's open it in uh, GIMP. So I'm just going to find it here real quick. So these are the pictures that I took. Let's open, um, let's open the second one here. And the reason that we need to do this is to make sure that the uh, picture is centered properly. So if you guys aren't familiar with GIMP, it's a open source, and I find myself constantly using this thing. I highly recommend it. All right, once the picture is open, what we're going to do is we're going to um, just select it. So just draw a little box around it, copy and paste it. And we're going to paste it as a new image. And what we want to do here is we want to straighten it out. If you see right now, um, the thing looks crooked. So we're going to just kind of more or less draw a uh, few lines around it. And the reason it looks like this is because it's a little bit skewed. But we're going to fix that. And this is... Uh, artifact of just the uh, the camera so unfortunately all cameras they they do this if you don't have it just right um, the, the picture will be a little bit skewed so again copy paste it as a new image and here's where we want to straighten it out so let's right click on this uh, this little tools box here and we're going to click on perspective so let's click on that and then we're gonna pull this until it's uh, pretty much straightened out with our our little outline edge here so all I'm doing is pulling it and, and moving it until it lines up with uh, what we need it to line up with Push it down, down here a little bit. And 
And once you get it ballpark, you can go ahead and uh, and complete it by by uh, clicking on transform. <clears throat> okay, so that's a little straighter. Um, now we're just going to finalize and make sure that it's totally straight. And now I'm going to carefully draw a box using this lasso tool around it. It doesn't have to be perfect, just close, close enough. Alright, once you've got that, let's copy it again. Paste it as another new image. Alright, so actually that looks pretty good. That looks straight. So the reason that we do this is every time you paste it as a new image, it's going to paste it into a square box. So if all the edges are lined up with the square box and there's no more manipulation that needs, uh, needs to be done here. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to save this. Um, so come down here to export as and we're going to export it as a JPEG file. Click on select file type at the bottom by extension. Look for JPEG. And then I want to put it the same place where the uh, other files that I'm working with are. So in my case, it's uh, let's see, YouTube channel and designing and printing a custom wall plate right here. So I'm going to call this import. <clears throat> Click export. And okay, that's good. All right, so now let's go back to on shape. And what we want to do here is we want to click on this insert new tab. So click on that. And we want to import. So we'll click import. We got to go to the folder where we have the files. So it's right here. And look for the import.jpg. Okay, perfect. All right, next thing we want to do is uh, create a sketch. So we're going to sketch um, right here on this top plane. Press the N key to straighten out the screen. And then I'm going to click this little down uh, arrow here uh, next to the little icon that says DXF. And we want to select Insert Image. Click on the import.jpg image, hover over this left top corner here, click and drag it down. And we'll, we'll center it here in a second. <clears throat> so what you can do here is you can grab it and move it around. So uh, that looks like it's about in the center. And look at my uh, little wallet, wall outlet here is a little bit skewed, so I may straighten that out. Ah, or maybe I'll just leave it the way it is. Yeah, I, ideally you want to straighten this thing out so that it's not uh, off kilter like this. What I may do is straighten it out in GIMP and then physically do it on the wall plate later. So uh, that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to draw a box around this. Copy it. I'm going to paste it again as a new image. And then uh, I'm going to straighten it out here. So I'm going to, I'm going to select the uh, rotate tool because I mean, that's what we need to do. Just rotate it a little bit. So I'm going to click on it and then I'm going to change the rotation angle. Alright, so we'll try that, see what that looks like. Uh, looks like it's a little bit too rotated, let me undo that. Try one. Uh, looks like it needs to be rotated a little bit more. Let's try one and a half. Yeah, that looks about right. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to draw another box around it. 
And uh, this box, I want it to be uh, pretty tight up against it. So we need to preserve these edges. So tight with these uh, this outside edge of this plug socket. All right, I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to go back to the picture that we were working with. And I'm going to paste it. <clears throat> You want to paste it as a new layer and you see that all right so that straightened it out for me now what's important here is that uh, you line up this bottom with uh, one of the sections here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up with the uh, with, with this one. So you can see the top one looks pretty much lined up. Bottom looks like it's off a little bit, but we'll, we'll drop it down one. Yeah, that looks about as good as it's going to get right there. All right, so I'm going to flatten this image by selecting uh, image. Go down to flatten image. All right, so we're going to be working with this part here. So let's select none. Let's export this again. Select sketch again. Top plane. Insert image. And this time we're going to select import 2.jpg. And just as before, I'm just going to click, drag down. And then I'm going to more or less try to center the this middle hole with this line here and now what we're going to need next is we're going to need one measurement so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from this shield from this plug down to the center of the shield of the next plug all right so I got 39 millimeters and what you're going to do now is Click on the line tool, and we're going to draw a line from the measurement that we just took. So I took it from this point to this point. And then now we got to give this a dimension. So I'm going to select the dimension tool, click on the line, and I'm going to call this 39 millimeters. And it's going to scale the picture properly. All right, so now we're, we're scaled. And I'm going to uh, click on the picture and move it. See, uh, deselect the dimension tool, click on the picture, and then recenter it, make sure it looks like the box is centered. That way, when we create our wall plate, uh, our wall plate will be centered with, uh, with this picture. And if it's not perfectly centered right out of the gate, it's okay. As you draw, if you need to move the picture, you can always go back and, and adjust the picture. That's no big deal. Click the check mark. All right, so now we got this kind of semi-faded picture in the background. And the cool thing about having it like that is... Oh, shoot. Uh, I'm going to go back and delete that line. That line's going to drive me crazy. All right, so once, you, once it's scaled, you can delete the line. Okay. Click the checkbox. Okay, so now we got this this semi-translucent picture that we can use as a guide. Now I'm not gonna talk through the whole video because I'll drive you guys crazy, and this is probably gonna be a lengthy process. So I'm just gonna put it on uh, like 200 times speed, and then you'll you'll see the process on how I go about creating something like this. All right, guys, uh, kick back. I'll uh, kick on some music, and you guys can just watch the process if you're interested in the individual steps slow down the video kill the music and you, you can see exactly what i'm doing
All right, guys, the reason that I printed this thing up was um, to, like, do a quick check, like a fitment check, instead of printing the whole part. I, that's why I sunk it down into the uh, the slicer program, so it would just print a thin, thin sheet. That way I could verify fitment. Uh, it fit okay, so I'm going to go ahead and move to printing the actual part. I'll set up a time lapse so you guys can check that out. Guys, if you're not printing on Garolite G10, you don't know what you're missing. I'll link the one in the video description that fits the CR10S Pro V2. I have another one that is 235 by 235 millimeter that fits the Ender 3 V2, Ender 3 Pro, Ender 3, Vox Lab, and any other printer that uses that, that size build plate. Eliminates the, the need for any kind of adhesion promoters. Throw away your scraper, you're never going to use it again. All right, guys, there it is all put together. So total cost to print, uh, 35 cents in materials plus the, whatever the electricity usage is of the 3D printer. Um, this material that I used is kind of semi-transparent, so you would have to either make it thicker if you wanted it all white or uh, paint it from the backside with some white paint and then the uh, blue outlet box won't show through. All right, guys, this video is a wrap. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Turn on your notification bell. And leave some comments. I love reading the comments and do my best to get back to you guys as soon as I see them. All right, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.